Good morning, everyone. My name is Pranab Pandari, and today I will be presenting our work titled Can Microservices Drive a Renaissance in Workload Aware Storage Management? This work is a collaboration between Emory University and IBM Research. Let's start by talking about microservices and why they are so popular. Microservices provide isolation between application components using container technologies like Docker. This has great implications in the application development process. It provides flexibility to developers by allowing them to use any tool they deem necessary for individual application components. On top of that, features can be implemented, tested, and deployed without making changes to the application, which boosts productivity. Scaling is also made simpler by scaling in terms of microservices, which is a much smaller unit compared to scaling entire monoliths. We are concerned with studying the storage implication of using microservices architecture for your application. Persistent storage can be done in different ways in microservices. You can use HTTP for object storage, you can store data in your local compute nodes, or you can use a remote distributed storage infrastructure. We are concerned with a remote distributed infrastructure where each microservice can manage its own volume. This kind of setting can provide superior performance over object storage. And while storing data in your compute node might be faster, it ties a microservice to individual nodes which contain the data that it needs to use, which is something we don't want. Our research can be divided into two components. First is workload characterization that compares the storage workload of a monolithic application to a microservices-based application. The second is the auto-tuning component where you develop a tool to auto-tune storage volumes based on the workload of the containers using it. The motivation for workload characterization comes from the observation that storage workload of monolith application compare requests from different components of the application. Whereas in microservices, the storage workload is a set of different workloads from microservices that use storage, but microservices are designed to perform a very simple task. The motivation for configuring each volume comes from the fact that not only do microservices use, manage their own volumes, they can all be also provisioned dynamically. In our characterization, we're looking for access pattern-based workload metrics. We want to compare if these metrics are more stable in a microservices workload compared to a monolithic workload. Our hypothesis is that these patterns are more stable in microservices workload because they are designed to be simple and perform a simple task. Storage auto tuning is complicated with a large parameter space. We choose cache size in order to do a case study on how persistent volumes can be configured in microservices. The application that we consider will use Docker for containers and Kubernetes for container orchestration. An IO cache in the compute node can instantly provide two benefits. The first one is local in-memory data access, which is low latency and reduction in network requests to the storage service which can prove beneficial in a communications heavy environment like microservices. Cash is allocated in a per persistent volume basis and the size is determined by the workload of the microservice using the volume. We compared shared and isolated implementation of a cache using ARC and LRU. We use two workloads that are virtual machines in a real world customer database deployment. We can see that the shared cache performed drastically lower compared to the isolated caches. The isolated caches are computed by splitting the cache equally between the two workloads and averaging the hit rates. This makes the case for isolated caches in any caching solution for microservices. Now, is just splitting the cache equally and having isolation enough? Or do we need to use different cache split ratios? So we evaluate different cache split ratios to find that favoring one workload to the other can prove to be beneficial than splitting the cache equally. This means that we need good workload analysis mechanism to utilize the limited resource that is the cache in the compute node effectively. This is our initial design for workload-aware storage configuration and scheduling in Kubernetes. 
the first component of our system is the collector. It collects traces and metrics on a per persistent volume basis. These metrics are fed to the recommender, which would generate persistent volume configuration recommendations based on these metrics. These recommendations are stored in extended abstracts and images in the repository. When Kubernetes is deploying a microservice, it can read these extended abstracts and get information on how to configure the storage system. And the scheduler can also read the persistent volume recommendation, for example, cache size, in order to determine if the compute node has enough memory for the IO cache for the persistent volume. Thank you so much. Please reach out to us with any questions and concerns. Thank you.